Arch Gaming Network is proud to bring you this Flash Review. Now here's your host, Sean Smith. Hello and thank you for stopping by. Uh, today we're taking a look at the game Watson and Holmes from the Diaries of 221B. Now this game was designed by Dr. Jesus Torres Castro and uh, published by Nova Ga uh, Luda Nova Games. Uh, in Watson and Holmes, you will be taking on the role of Dr. Watson. You'll be working alongside Sherlock Holmes to be able to solve one of the mysteries that come in the, uh, in the game. It is a deduction game that uh, also has a little bit of auction bidding to it, a little bit of take that, uh, certainly some memory, and also uh, some variable player powers as well. You're going to be presented with a case, and your job is to visit the various locations to try and gather information so that you can answer three questions regarding the case. So, will you be able to crack the case? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Let's take a look at the setup and an overview of the game, and I'll let you know what I think on the other side. Okay, to set up Watson and Holmes, uh, you're going to grab a case out of the box. Uh, the, they come, kind of comes with a, a basic tutorial case, case zero. The level of difficulty is listed here, so this is the easiest level. And then it has a card layout. All right, do not open this, and we're not going to open this, but then find all of the cards that say case zero on it right there, and they have a number, and just place them in the number as outlined on the case notes. You're also going to find the 221B card. This has the solution to the case on the back of it. And then you have a carriage stop as well. You have a Sherlock Holmes card that you can put off to the side. You have a Dr. Watson card that you'll put off to the side. You have these uh, police surveillance tokens. You just put those off to the side. You have the call off uh, notes and put those off to the side. And then you can make a pile of these. These are carriage tokens. There are a lot more than this, but I just put a few out. Each player is going to take their player token and the magnifying glass. Uh, you're also going to get one police token. You'll get 10 carriage tokens. This is worth five and these are worth one. I almost forgot you also have a lockpick token that you can put off to the side. There's actually several of those. I'm just putting out one. Each player will need uh, some paper and a pencil. Those are not included in the game. Now just note that what you start with and how many tokens you get can be dictated by that particular case. For case zero, this would be the particular setup. Now, uh, you also have these character cards. All right. Now, normally you would uh, shuffle these up and give one to each player at random. Now, these cards will give you, uh, for the most part, just a one-time power that you can reveal usually at any time. So for case zero, we are not using any of the special powers. Okay, the way the game works is you're going to take the case and turn it over and then you can read the case out loud to everybody. And it's a story and then there are three questions that you need to answer to be able to solve the case. You can also use this uh, QR code here, scan that, and then it will take you to an audio file and play the case for you that way if you don't want to read it. Now at the end of the case notes, there may be special rules that go along with that particular case. We're not going to go over those here. The object of the game is for you to take your player and to go around to these different compartments. These, uh, a lot of them have to do with a train as the theme of the first case is something has taken place on a train. And you're going to be going around here uh, and reading the information on the back of these cards, making notes, and trying to be the first person to get here and answer all three of the questions correctly. Okay, so uh, you'll notice uh, I put a 
police token on here. We'll talk about why in just a moment. You're going to determine who will go first and then they're going to get this diary card. This will be uh, considered the start player card, okay? A turn is broken into two phases, the visitation phase and the investigation phase. On your turn, if you're the first player, you can decide to go to any of these locations outlined here. And now you can either walk to any of them or you can take a carriage to uh, any of those spots. Um, since I'm the first player, uh, I, you know what, I think I'm gonna go to the goods platform. Now, I cannot go here. In fact, no players can go here because it is under police surveillance. So the only way that you can go to that particular spot is if you have one of these call off tokens. If you have one of these, you turn it in and you call off the police. The other way you can do it is if you happen to have the lock pick, you can turn this in. It doesn't get rid of the police, but it allows you to look at this card, look at the information on the back side, and when you're done, you'll put the police token back on it. Now, besides walking to a place, I can also take a carriage to a place. By using my carriage tokens, and I can use as many as I want, uh, let's say I really wanted to get to this second class uh, car here. Um, maybe I'm going to go there and take one carriage token with me. I'll explain how and why you would do that in just a moment. So now it's the Reds player's turn, okay? And the Red player can do the same thing. They can go to any space. Uh, they can go here if they have the lock pick or the call off token, or they can walk or take a carriage to any spot or they could pay four carriage tokens to take the Dr. Watson card. So let's say the red player is going to go ahead and take this and pay four of those cards. Now it moves on, or four of those carriage tokens. Now it moves on to the uh, black player here. He wants to go to the second class car. Well, he can't just go here because someone is already there. However, he could take two carriage tokens and when he does that, the green player now has been outbid for that spot. So you would take your player off of that card and you would keep all carriage tokens except for one. So if you had multiple on there, you would uh, keep all of those except for one. One of them goes back into the uh, pool. And now the next player would go. Well, we're playing a three player game. So it's green's turn. Now, Green can go to any spot again, including this carriage stop, okay? If you do this, you really not, there's no really any information here, but you, it allows you to pick up carriage tokens. But let's say the uh, green player really wants to go to the second class. Well, so the green player is now going to take three tokens, three of the carriage tokens, and go here, and now the black player has to leave keeps all except for one, so one goes back into the pool. Now it's the red player's turn. The red player could also go here and try to outbid, but is gonna just go to the restaurant car. So now it's the black player's turn again, and he's gonna give up, he's not going to go there, he's gonna go to the mail wagon. Since green has now uh, won, you would remove those tokens and they would go back into the pool. Now during the visitation phase, your player can also go to 221B to try and solve the uh, crime. Now if multiple players go at the same time, whoever has the most carriage tokens at the uh, end of the visitation phase there, we'll get to try and solve the crime first. Okay, and then also during the visitation phase, one player can pay four tokens to grab the Sherlock Holmes card. Now, the only time you're really going to use this is when a player has gone to uh, try to solve the case and did so unsuccessfully. Uh, the Sherlock Holmes card then allows you to ask that player uh, certain questions that could help you solve the case. And that's it for the visitation phase. Now you would move on to the investigation phase. Now the person who took the Dr. Watson card, in this case it was the red player, can now ask any of the other two players, green or black, to read their card out loud. They will read it for everybody. Now after that is done, each of the players can pick up their card, okay, and read what is on the back and then take notes. 
when they've when they have done that okay when they put the card back down if they have a police token they may place that on that card that of course stops other players from being able to go there again unless they have the call off token or the lock pick okay all the players will then pick up their player pawns. You'll return Dr. Watson, and then you'll do the visitation and then the investigation phase. Now to win the game, you're going to uh, go to 221B, and then you're going to read the card at, at the end of the visitation phase. Uh, if you are the only player here, or if there are multiple players here and you have the most uh, carriage tokens, you'll get to read that first. And then you get to say whether or not you solved the case. If you were, you, you answered all three questions successfully, you've won. But if you got any of them wrong, you will say out loud how many you got right. You won't say which questions you got right. You won't say what the answer was to those questions. You just say how many you got right. Then you become kind of the voice for Sherlock Holmes because someone can pay three tokens to grab this during the visitation phase. Using the Sherlock Holmes card, you can either do an answer consultation or an answer check. So there are no limits to the number of rounds. It's just whoever is the first person who can correctly identify uh, all of those correctly is the winner of the game. Okay, so Watson and Holmes is a really good game. The theme really is deep in this game. You really feel like you are a detective visiting these locations, gathering these clues and writing them down, and then trying to solve this case, trying to be the first one to get to 221B and solve this mystery. The components to the game are nice. I think uh, they really add to the theme. There isn't a lot of artwork in it, but you know, the artwork that they have done, you know, on the, the case notes and uh, the variable player power cards, um, are, are well done. I like that it comes with 12, I guess essentially 13 cases, it, you know, since you, they do have a case of zero in there. Obviously this is a game that once you've solved the case, that's it. You can't go back and play it again. Uh, it is done. Once you've completed all 13 of the missions, it's over. Now, I've only played a few of the missions uh, and I've only played the easy one so far, but I'm proud to say I've solved the case first each time. Now even on the easiest level, the game still has enough, the case has enough uh, challenge to it uh, that it, it feels uh, meaty. The game is not overly complex. Of course, I haven't played the harder cases, so maybe as we progress further, uh, it might be, but I'm really looking forward to playing that next case. I think uh, as far as the gameplay, it tends to be fairly smooth. Really, the only thing that kind of slows it down are those times when you know, depending on who's taking notes and how much, how many notes they feel they need to take based on a card, uh, that, that can kind of slow it down a little bit. But for the most part, the game keeps moving. You're constantly thinking and constantly uh, trying to figure out where to go next, who to interview, and what's important in the clues that you're given. I like the fact that they put those carriage tokens in there and the ways that you can use them. I thought that was pretty smart. Now, obviously the more players you have playing the game, I think the more interaction and the better that interaction is going to be. I've read some uh, reviews or some comments on the game that it doesn't work with two players. Well. That isn't entirely correct. The game does play okay with two players. Now, as far as vying for a spot or one of the places on the board, that's pretty much taken out of the game. And even the Dr. Watson card kind of loses some of its uh, appeal because again, you know, with just two players, for the most part, you're going to get to go wherever you want. But the game still, has the same feel to it as far as trying to solve that mystery and trying to be the first one there. So 
yes, if you play with three or more, you're going to have a better experience, but two players does work as well. Now, for me, you know, I have to be in the mood to play this sort of game because it is thinky uh, and there isn't a lot of social interaction in the game. But that's okay because when I'm ready for a game like that, uh, like this, this one is perfect. I really do enjoy it. So I think we have a very solid game here. I give this game a 9. Now, if you uh, enjoyed this review, please take a moment to hit the like button below, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out some of our other great reviews. And once again, I thank you for stopping by. This Flash review was brought to you by the Arch Gaming Network. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook.